Welcome back, everybody, to the OFL Season 2 Playoff Action. Yes, the postseason is here as the number three-seeded Tennessee Titans going to be taking on the defending champions, the six-seeded New England Patriots, who barely snuck in this season. They're going to try to go for the two-peat. The Titans tried to make a postseason run last season, were unsuccessful. Let's see what they can do here. So here is the New England offense, led by last year's MVP, Jared Goff, fittingly taking on this year's MVP, Russell Wilson as he gets it to Travis Etienne, the rookie out of Clemson, for a gain of 11. And as you can see, New England's offense moving the ball slow and steady down the field. Now from the five second and goal, Goff gets it to Mike Evans for the touchdown. And New England is quickly on the board. They lead it 7-0. Here's the Titan offense with MVP quarterback Russell Wilson at the helm on second and eight. He's getting sacked. There's Chris Jones going downstairs where Daddy hides the vodka. Third and 13, there's Hayden Hurst, the tight end for the first down. Former minor league baseball prospect with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now from a four. Second and goal, here is Russ. Going to dance in the pocket, and he is brought down once again by Chris Jones, his second sack of the game. So that will lead to a third and goal for Tennessee. Wash, rinse, repeat. Russ is going to be sacked this time by Melvin Ingram the third, the former South Carolina Gamecock. So now fourth and goal. Here's the field goal from Tennessee. Kaimir Fairbairn will make it, and the Titans will make it a 7-3 ball game. So here returns the New England offense, second and three for Jared Goof. And the boys, Goff has almost all the time in the world, wanted to take a shot deep, but instead is sacked by Emmanuel Ugba. That would lead to a third and seven. New England would convert. A few plays later, second down, handoff for Travis Etienne, who's had an excellent game up to this point. Gaining 15 yards, nearly at the 69-yard mark for the day. Nice. And then from the 16, wide open up the middle of the field is going to be none other than the tight end, George Kittle. New England now up 14-3. to three. Late here in the first half, New England would get it back. They are out of timeouts from the 44. Goff's pass would be caught and went out of bounds at the 25. Uh, the Patriots are not going to waste any time. They're going to go for the field goal. That was Mike Evans, by the way, who made that catch. As the kick is good from Ryan Suckup, I believe. And now it is 17-3 as we advance to the second half. Titans not looking good, and things aren't going to get much better. Third down, there's Joey Bosa sacking Russell Wilson. That'll force a three and out. New England has it back now from the 32, third and 10. Here is Jared Goff. All the time in the world, almost. Once again, I jinxed him, kind of. Sack on the play by Malcolm Brown. That would lead to a fourth down. New England would have to punt it, but he punted it to the one. What a punt! And then New England would get the safety. Chandler Jones uh, would tackle the running back in the backfield, Sonny Michelle. So now it's 19-3. New England would have a long drive down the field. They'd kick a short field goal, making it 22-3. And at this point, it's a 19-point game, three-possession deficit. I figured it would be time to simulate, and uh, the Titans just are not looking hot at home. You wanted to beat the defending champions, and it does not happen. The Titans are driving down the field, however, and they would score a late touchdown, but it's not going to be enough. Two-possession game. We're not going to hop in and watch. If it got really close, I would have hopped in, but it never did. New England would score a touchdown here late on this possession. They'd make it 29-10 to 10 as uh, at the one. They would eventually get in. Alan Hearns with the score. So now it's 29-10. to 10. I would just speed up the simulation. And that's the final score of this game. So New England, the defending champs, will be moving on. They're going to be heading to Kansas City next weekend to take on the number one seeded Kansas City Chiefs, who had by a less Wed by less. No, led by Wes Lunt. Jeez. Here's a look at the numbers. The Patriots were just far better on both sides of the ball. Goff played well. ETN was very good. The defensive line was very good as well. And now the game of a week in Soldier Field. The 9-7, four-seeded Chicago Bears. Going to be taking on the 10-6, five-seeded Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals have some quarterback questions last week. Cardell Jones really struggled against the Dolphins. He would get the start here. 
Behind him on the depth chart is JT Barrett and Mitchell Trubisky. Don't expect Trubisky to get playing time anytime soon. I will tell you that. Third and 10 here for the Cardinal offense early in this game. Here's Cardell Jones scrambling like he's late on a date. And he's going to run for the first down. Jones sliding for a gain of 24. Excellent run. And then third and eight. Wash, rinse, repeat as Jones scrambling. Going to run for the first down and more as Cardell Jones slides at the six-yard line. And Arizona is moving it. Third and goal now from the two. Jones looking to the back of the end zone. It would be caught by Antonio Brown for the touchdown. And the Cardinals are quickly on the board. But the Bears would answer right back saying, what you can do, we can do better and a whole lot quicker. The number one overall draft pick, Humphrey Hobart, on the first play of the drive, will take it 71 yards to the house, untouched like weekend homework. And the Bears will quickly tie this game up. At seven apiece, here is the ensuing Chicago possession. Third down, Calvin Mentor, a rookie quarterback from Friends University. Yes, that is a real school. He would get sacked by the cornerback, Casey Hayward. Both defenses now looking hot after each offense scored on their opening possession. Here's Delaney Walker, the old man, trying to show he still has it. Puffin and puffin of a Cardinal sideline, but still a nice gain for Delaney. And then third and six now for 49. Here is Cardell Jones. Going to try to scramble for the first down again. He would not do that. Third time is not the charm for the Arizona offense. So they would go for a 64-yard field goal. This would tie the OFL record previously set by Bears kicker Jake Elliott. And Gano's kick is way off. I think he was doing the bird box challenge. I don't know what kind of kick that was. Yuck. So here is the Chicago offense. Nice pass from Mentor over to his tight end, Travis Kelsey. Now from the nine, first and goal. Here is Mentor, the superstar rookie quarterback. Short pass, and it would be fumbled. Stefan Diggs loses it. Wagner with the force, and it'll be recovered by Leighton Vander Esch. Bobby Wagner, who won ONFC Defense Player of the Year, had 11 fumble forces. Ouch. How would the Arizona offense respond Poof. Joe Mixon loses five on the pass, so that possession would lead to nothing. Bears have it back. Here's Calvin Mentor. He has to dance in the pocket, just heaves up a prayer, and it's going to be picked off by Tyron Matthew. I don't know why Mentor didn't just throw it away, and the Honey Badger's actually going to get a really good return after the interception, bringing it past midfield. So just a rookie mistake right there by Mentor in his first OFL playoff game. Can Arizona answer back and score some points? Well, here's a good start. Nice run and more from Joe Mixon being brought down at the 30. And he's going to gain an additional 15. Face mask on Nick Bosa. Bosa has to be pissed off because now it's even less likely he's going to get that White House visit. So the score remains uh, at 7 apiece here. However, the Cardinals have it at the 4, should punch it in, and they will do just that. Lamar Miller for the touchdown in Arizona. Now leads it 14-7 late in the first half. Bears have it back. Here is Calvin and the crew. What can they do? Mentor trying to find the hole, but instead he is sacked by the veteran interior defensive lineman, Gerald McCoy. He plays later. Bears now have it at the 41. It is third and five. Nice pass from Mentor. It would be caught by Kelsey for the first down, and Chicago's offense will keep moving it. From the 26 now, here's Mentor. Dumps it off for Hill, and that ball is out. Bobby Wagner forces another one. C.J. Mosley has nothing but green grass in front of him, and that'll be a touchdown for the Cardinals. Mosley, who finished, I think, third in the O-NFC defensive, defensive Player of the Year with the score, obviously, as mentioned earlier, Wagner was first. And the fumble fest will continue. Humphrey Hobart loses it. Casey Hayward recovers. And the Bears have butterfingers right now. They cannot hold on to anything. Arizona's offense wouldn't do too much. They would kick a field goal here. Gano does make it. That one goes right down Main Street. They now lead it 24-7. Bears now have to get a comeback here, and they cannot fumble the ball again. Here is Humphrey Hobart. He had a nice run earlier, and he gets another one. The comeback is alive, this time from 75 yards out. The rookie, number one overall selection from Idaho State, 
making it a 10-point game. Other than the fumble, Humphrey Hobart has been nothing short of outstanding in this game. Bears will get it back. Here's Calvin Mentor on the run. He fumbles it again, and it's recovered by Larry Joby. The Bears just cannot hold on to the football to save their lives. Here's Graham Gano now for a field goal to make it 27-14. to 14. It is good. So the Bears are only still down by two touchdowns, but things are not looking good for them. They just have to hold on to the ball, and maybe they can get a comeback. As another fumble, Bobby Wagner with his fourth force of the day. This time, it would be recovered by Chicago. So fourth and fourth from the 47. This is essentially game here. As Calvin Mentor, you might as well call him Kim Jong-un because he's about to launch a nuke. Heaving it for the end zone, and it's caught by Josh Doxson for the touchdown. What a catch for Doxson. The officials would review the spot of the ball. The play would stand, and it's now 27-21. Can the Bears get a stop? Second down, here's Cardell Jones on the option. Getting the first down run. Only four carries for him, but he's made the most of them. Second and seven, now at the 43. We've hit the two-minute warning. Cardinals chewing some clock. Here's Joe Mixon. Has space. Mixon with the first down and tackled inside the 10 at the 9. Bears have to play the timeout game. Fourth and goal. Here's Graham Gano to make it a two-possession game. The field goal is good, and now it is 30-21. to 21. Bears out of timeouts with a minute a little bit over a minute and a half to go. And they're going to start this drive with dadgum good field position. Excellent kick return to the 29-yard line. So let's see what the Bears can do here. They're going to need points, an onside kick, and then some more points. Mentor sacked on first down by Miles Garrett, his second of the game. So fourth and 16 from the 35. The Bears can afford to kick a field goal here. And the kick from Jake Elliott would go in. So now it's 30 to 24. Chicago needs an onside kick to stay alive. The Bears season. And it will be recovered by Arizona. And that's how this game ends. The Arizona Cardinals will be moving on. They defeat the Bears 30 to 24. Only 45 passing yards. Cardell Jones threw for 45 yards. Yikes. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. As uh, the Bears, I feel like they outplayed Arizona, but just the cheesy fumble forces. Madden, fix your game. These X factors are too ridiculous. I think the fumble slider for uh, user was at like 25. The Bears were the user team in this game. So Madden will do Madden. But nonetheless, the Cardinals will move on and the Bears are eliminated. So we're going to simcast these next two games. The five-seeded Denver Broncos is going to take on the four-seeded Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh was 8-8, eight and eight. Denver was 11-5, and five. so I think the Broncos should win this game in the snow. Denver currently up by three here early in the second half. Got a back-and-forth match now, 20-17 here in the fourth quarter. Can the Steelers drive down the field and take the lead? Yes, they will, and as time expires, the Pittsburgh Steelers will upset the Denver Broncos 24-20, and the Steelers will be moving on, so this means Pittsburgh will be playing the Miami Dolphins. And obviously, as mentioned earlier, New England will play the Kansas City Chiefs. And then this next game for the ONFC does uh, depict who Arizona will be playing. Redskins taking on the Eagles, also in the snow. Eagles made the OFL Bowl last year, almost won, but choked at the end, which is how New England got the victory. Redskins finished the season 9-7 and seven with a lot of coaching turmoil, but they think they have their guy right now. Washington up by three late in the fourth. Eagles score a touchdown late. They're going to get a field goal, and that's how this game ends. The Eagles survive. They defeat the Redskins 31-24. This means that Philadelphia will play the Atlanta Falcons next round, and the Cardinals get a rematch with the number one seeded San Francisco 49ers. That's going to be a fun one, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be a fun one. So the Patriots, Eagles, Steelers, and Cardinals will move on. Your players of the week go to Alvin Kamara, Bobby Wagner, Jared Goff, and Zach Brown. And then, of course, the matchups for next episode, which will be streamed on Twitch this weekend. Patriots at Chiefs, Cardinals at 49ers, Steelers at Dolphins, and Eagles at Falcons. It should be a fun one. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode.